I've recently discovered at night in the city where there's no street lights, slightly more negative lenses actually help to see a bit clearer in the dark, as in becoming slightly towards nearsighted when it's dark. And I was curious if it was just me, so I tried this on several friends and three out of four said that, that yes, slightly negative lenses helped a little bit in the dark, in the range of uh, minus half to minus one diopter. And what causes this? It's spherical aberrations. I'll demonstrate with this light projector condenser lens which has spherical aberrations and the light bulb and something to project it onto. So under normal circumstances our pupils aren't all the way open so I'm just going to put this in there to make for a smaller pupil or aperture and now let's find focus for this light bulb and that will be right about here. Now if we pretend that it's very dark and our pupil opens up further or a larger aperture you can see this circle has become much larger so let's mark where it is now and try to find focus again. So we can't get it as sharp but uh, the spot seems to be smallest right about here. So we've moved our lens from here to here to get better focus with the spherical aberrations. And spherical aberrations are because lenses are often made out of a spherical shape because that's easy to grind very accurately. And as long as we're not using a large curvature we're okay, everything converges in one spot. So if the lens was only this big, it'd be fine. But now if we use the entire lens of this rather thick lens, what we can see is the rays no longer converge. And now with a whole lot more rays on here, we can see if we want to have the smallest spot that we're projecting onto, we need to move the focal plane from here all the way over to here, essentially closer to the lens. We have to treat that lens like it's a shorter focal length because towards the edges it just deflects the light more than it should. Now if we think of this lens and this focal plane like a camera, by moving the uh, focal plane closer to the lens it's like we focused further away. And the cornea of the eyes is also a bit spherical because it's a fairly thin layer of tissue with a bit of fluid pressure behind it so it's a bit like a balloon which would be more spherical than parabolic. Now with our eyes we can't just move the lens or the focal plane but what we do is warp the lens but uh, if we're already at the limit for how far we can focus away we can use glasses and these are minus one diopter and you can see that makes the spot significantly smaller. And these are cheap uh, myopia glasses, these are minus one diopter. I bought these for four dollars off of AliExpress. I guess it's a bit like uh, buying cheap reading glasses from a drugstore except uh, these are in negative diopters as well. I guess good for people that are too poor to uh, buy prescription glasses. So we tried this just with uh, lens flippers with uh, different powers of lenses in and see what would work best and uh, the effect is fairly subtle but we found minus a half a diopter to minus one diopter somewhere around there usually worked best so minus three quarters is probably about the sweet spot but it doesn't always work. The effect is very subtle so Looking at the dark edge of the uh, trees against the horizon, you can see an improvement, but anything that was lit well enough to be under street lights, for example, the effect of this disappeared. And for me, it actually makes it worse because I can't accommodate as well as I used to be able to, so putting negative lenses in front makes it worse. Now, when it's really, really dark, the effect becomes stronger. So waking up at night uh, with the curtains closed and Basically, most of the light is just from the alarm clock. Um, I found that uh, minus two worked best, but at that point, with almost no light, my visual acuity is so low that basically, to recognize this E, I could do it from maybe four feet away. And with 2020 vision, that should be recognizable at 200 feet. So basically, at that point, with practically darkness, my visual acuity is about 1 50th of 2020. But with that, using minus two diopters, these are also from AliExpress, that became a little bit clearer. So if it's really, really, really dark, um, even more negative diopters help. But then if I glance at the alarm clock, for example, with these on, I couldn't read it, but the alarm clock was bright enough that there was no problem in the dark room. It's just the very dark objects where minus two diopters helped. And what is it that got me started looking into this? Well, it was nighttime and there's the alarm clock on the nightstand and out of curiosity I looked through Rachel's glasses. 
these aren't actually hers. And of course, everything was horribly fuzzy for me because she's quite nearsighted. But looking at the alarm clock on the nightstand, I could see the dots on it were, of course, a largish circular sort of things, a circle of confusion. But it wasn't a perfect circle. They weren't quite round. They just seemed to be a bit bright towards the edge. So if I put a minus three diopter glasses lens in front, you can see that turns into a larger circle of confusion. And you can also see it's a bit brighter towards the edges. Or I can just get the same effect by moving this closer and we also get that bright edge. And this is with the small aperture. If I make the pupil larger, that effect becomes much more pronounced. Now, this bright edge is only if we're too close to the point of focus with spherical aberrations. If we go in the opposite direction, we get uh, something quite a bit different. And normally, when you have a camera that's out of focus, the circle of confusion is a nice, even circle, something more like this. So I was puzzling a little bit why I wasn't seeing a circle of confusion like this, but more one that looked like this. Why would there be a bright edge to a circle of confusion until I finally realized Oh yeah, spherical aberrations, that looks like that. And I already knew that you can partially compensate for these spherical aberrations by just focusing a little bit further away. It doesn't recover the focus completely, but it makes it a slightly less bad compromise. Now this circle of confusion is uh, still a lot cleaner and more regular than what I saw, so let's try to make a really shitty lens. This is a slide projector condenser lens. Not a great lens, but I think still better than the lens in the eyes. So I got a sandwich bag with some water in it and I'll squeeze that between these two pieces of wood here and we have ourselves a sort of lens in here. Now with my shitty lens and the light bulb the image I'm seeing here with a circle of confusion is actually a bit more reminiscent of what I was looking through Rachel's glasses although not nearly as bad as this. And it turns out I've also got uh, perhaps a bit of astigmatism here because it turns into a line segment. But first, let's make the aperture just a little bit smaller because the edges of the sandwich bag lens are quite bad. And looking for a focus here, I think this is about as well as we can do. But if I use a uh, two diopter cylinder lens on here, I should be able to get that circle of confusion a bit more roundish. I can get much more of a focus by correcting for the astigmatism in the lens. This is without, this is with. And the thing I'm using here is a uh, two diopter cylinder lens. There. And it's from the camera, makes it a bit fuzzier. So my shitty sandwich bag lens ended up with uh, spherical aberrations because I could see that bunching up near the edges and a bit of astigmatism which I could correct with cylinder. So <laughs> not that unlike the human eye because you know, the human eye, an optical system made out of wet blobs of tissue, uh, I'm surprised it works as well as it does. And one more thing, I managed to tweak my sandwich bag lens to get rid of most of the astigmatism, so now it focuses onto a relatively nice small spot. Now imagine this is looking up at the night sky, this is a star, and this is what we see basically focused at infinity. But because it's night, our pupils are larger, so let's open up that pupil a little bit. And what does it look like now? It's got like these little wings on it now. And that's focused at infinity. And remember, we can't focus past infinity, most of us. Make the aperture even larger, pupil open up further. And it's got more wings on it. Does that look perhaps a bit like a star? And the bright spot with a little bit of fuzziness around it reminds me very much of what a star looks like looking up at night. So could it be that our whole notion of stars being stars is because of aberrations in the cornea? Food for thought.